everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm a guy called Joe and this is Bootstrapping Tools Community Support where we help scrappy bootstrappers just like yourself figure out how to overcome some of the hurdles that they're facing. Before we dive into today's topic, uh, please make sure to uh, check out our YouTube channel. Uh, we have lots of videos on there that go over lots of different tools including Google Sheets, Google Apps Scripts, Retool, Data Studio, as well as many others. If you don't see something that you are looking for here, feel free to shoot us an email at feedback at bootstrapping.tools. Uh, and we'll be happy to take a look into that and also create a video just for you. But for today's topic, we're actually gonna be helping out this post uh, on a subreddit for Google App Scripts. Uh, the poster is actually looking to kind of automate uh, entries for uh, one sheet over to another. So what they're doing is they have two sheets. Uh, on one sheet, they're pasting in information and then they wanna run a script uh, hosted on Google Apps Scripts connected to that uh, Google Sheet and then have that compare the two lists together and append anything that is not matching over to the uh, first sheet or you know the sheet that they're not pasting into. So let's dive over to our um, sheet. I actually have it already set up for us uh, based on what they entered. There's a couple of um, there's at least four columns that we know of. They didn't tell us what column B and column C were. They just said that it was a VLOOKUP. Uh, but then column A, they said was a name and it wasn't a VLOOKUP. And then D is some static information that they post in uh, as updates. So I just put in a bunch of stuff here. Uh, and then for name, I put in a bunch of random names that we have. And then on the bottom, we have uh, another tab called pay support. And then in pay support, um, we tried to mimic uh, what we had before were those four names along with stuff. And then we add in two additional names, Jimmy Nolan and Yana Garsha. Um, I don't, I honestly don't know where I get these names from. I just made them up. Um, but either way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna need Google app scripts. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to the top and then click on the tools option and then click on script editor. What that's gonna do when you click on it is it's going to t open up the script editor. I actually clicked it just before so I can rename it, uh, but it's gonna pop up with my function and we're just gonna go ahead and rename this. So we'll say add new names. We can save that. And you'll see up here that now there's a function called add new names and that's how we're actually gonna test it using the run button and the debug button over here. So there's a couple of things that uh, we're gonna need here. Uh, in Google App Sheets, because you're using the app script, uh, you have access to all of the different uh, libraries that Google has to offer for you. And one of those is actually the spreadsheet app. So we're gonna declare a variable here, we'll just call it SS just for short. And then we're gonna call it the spreadsheet app. And then from there, we're also gonna get the active spreadsheet just so that we know we're getting the, uh, the one that is currently active. It's just the way it's said it. it's good practice. And then we're also going to uh, determine what the sheet is. So there are two sheets uh, that we want here. Remember we have the roster sheet, and then we have the page report sheet. Uh, so what we're gonna wanna do is we'll want the reference sheet, so we'll call it that reference sheet. And I need to spell that correctly, reference sheet. And what you're gonna do is SS, so that's the spreadsheet app that we've assigned to that variable. And we're gonna say get sheet by name. And then since we named the sheet, the page report, let's put that in there. And then what this function is gonna do is it's going to look for any sheets with that name and then assign it to the reference sheet variable. And then we're also gonna do the same thing as a destination sheet for the roster. So we're gonna do the same thing, get sheet by name, roster. All right. So now that we have this, what we wanna do is we wanna get the information out of uh, column A since that's where our names are. So we wanna get column A for the page report and then column A for the roster sheet. And then we wanna take those two and then compare them against one another. So the way that we're gonna be doing that is we're gonna go and say var destination, oops, let's actually start with the reference, let's call it var reference names equals the reference sheet dot get range. And get range is another function uh, that this library provides to us. It's an easy way for us to get the information out. Uh, we're not gonna use the one that's displayed on the screen right here. We're actually gonna use one that uses four different variables. Uh, so the first one is row, so this is the starting row, and then the second one is the starting column. So we're gonna do one and one because we wanna get the A column. We wanna start off from the first row. We're gonna do that, and then the number of rows 
depends on that sheet. So we're going to use reference sheet. And this is another for, um, function that we can use called get last row. And then for the number of columns, it's just one because we're only obtaining one, uh, one column of data there. We're also going to do get values there because if we only get the range, it'll just be an object. But by passing get values, we're going to get everything uh, stored within that range. Now we're also going to do the same thing for the destination names. So destination names equals destination sheet dot get range. And it's the same thing, one comma one. And then destination sheet dot get last row. And then it's also only going to be one and we're going to do get values. So we get the information. So we can actually test this out now. We're going to use console.log to test it out just to make sure that everything looks right. We're going to say reference names, do that. And let's copy this, paste it down. And we're just going to replace that with destination name so that we can compare the two. All right, so save that. And then once we hit run, we should see it output here. So the reference names uh, has all the way up to Yana. So it includes Jimmy and Yana, whereas the destination names only includes John Doe and Jane Targer. So with that, what we're also going to do now is we're going to compare the two together. And what we're going to use to compare the two is the filter function. And this is a typical JavaScript function that you're going to have. So let's call this the filtered names. And we're going to set that equal to the reference names, whoop, reference names dot filter. And then here, what we're going to do is we're going to give it a reference of row and do a fat arrow function here where it does not equal the destination destination names that includes that row. All right. So what this is basically doing here is it's saying go through uh, all the reference names and then filter it according to items for each item that doesn't equal a value the same as the destination names. And then that's going to return it so that the filter names will only include things that don't match up together. So things that don't overlap. So in other words, only the new names. Now, however, uh, we're not quite done yet. Now, the thing here is when we run this, you're going to notice that it's not going to work because the get when you get the values from a Google spreadsheet, right, when you're using this, it's going to give you a set of uh, nested arrays. So that's actually not going to work. So let me show you that real quick. When we run this, you're going to notice that the data is in these nested arrays. So this is the full array. And then within it, you have nested arrays. What we actually want to do, uh, and here, let me actually do the console log here so you can see what the filter names looks like. And I'll show you exactly why there's no difference. So run that. You can see if there's no difference there. What we want to do at the end of these is also to flatten it. And what this flat function does is another JavaScript function. It'll just take that array and then flatten it by one level. Um, that way you just get a list of all the names. And then when you uh, compare the ones to filter each other, it'll actually filter out. So let's save that and then run it. And we'll see in the output that now we have the filter names. It's just Jimmy and Yana. And for the reason for that is instead of doing nested arrays in here that we're comparing, we actually just have one array with different positions or values within it. And then you're comparing each one with each other and then just returning the uh, ones that don't match. Now, before we write it back into the Google Sheet, uh, the way that Google um, Sheets works is that you know you have a cell in there, but then in order to do a grouping of cells, so this is going to be a row, right? So we do need to have that nested array again. So it actually looks like this. If you have multiple rows, it's going to be something like that. Um, actually, no, sorry. I, uh, said that wrong. It's actually like this. Uh, each one is nested. So you want to be able to do it like that. But either way here, the way we're going to do it is we're going to uh, iterate through the filter names now and then push it into an array um, as a nested array. So let's actually um, say, let's call a new one called import names. We're going to set that to an empty array. And then we'll just do a four statement here. So for i equals zero, typical loop, uh, and i is less than the filtered names dot length. 
i plus plus, which just means to iterate on it. So it starts from zero, then one, then two, and then three until it reaches the end of the filtered names length. And what we'll do here is we're going to take the import names dot push uh, and do uh, an array, and we'll just put in the filtered name i, and that will allow us to uh, to see what it actually looks like. So let's uh, do another console log just to show you exactly what that array looks like names and what we expect is a nested array of those imported names just like that perfect so what this is going to happen is it's going to put in one row and then another row into that column so now what we want to do is we want to put it into the right place so we have to define the destination sheet again so destination sheet actually we have to define the destination range so destination sheet dot get range and remember we want to start at the end of the uh, sheet. So we don't want to start at 1-1 one, because one, that's going to be A1 over here. We want to start over at A6. So we want to start at the end of whatever list is already available in the roster. So the way you do that is actually to say you want to do destination sheet dot get last row, just like we did before. But remember, that's going to get you the number of rows that are in there. So you want to do plus one so that you go to the next row and start off there. So we're going to do that and then comma one for the first column because uh, we want column A. And then now this is the number of rows. So the number of rows is actually going to be import names dot length. And then it's only one column. And from there, what we're going to do is we're going to set values. This is also another built in function uh, that Google provides us. And then we're going to import names. We're going to set values to the import names. And what this is going to do is it's going to go through all the data, clean it all up, put it into a nested array. And then within this range, this specific range is going to set those values. So if we run this, we expect that over here we'll get Jimmy and then we'll get Yana. So run that. This runs to success. And we go back here. You'll see that Jimmy and Yana are now added and appended. So if we add in another name, uh, I, Grisha, let's say, Grisha stat, state, sure, why not? Uh, so we have that, and when we run it, Grisha should get added to the roster. So that runs, execution completed, go back over here to the roster, and Grisha is now added. Now for you to run it through here, instead of having to go to the editor every single time, uh, go over to tools, select macros, and you can actually import that through this uh, option over here. That way, in your tools, you can just run as a macro over here. You can also just set it as a uh, as a hotkey. So if we do Command Shift Option One, it'll just run it. So actually, let's go over here and let's add in another one, Jane Doe. When I keep it simple, uh, who knows another name? Alan Mayer, sure. So if we go to the roster, when we hit the macro over here, it's gonna run and it's gonna add those two. It's gonna append it. If we delete those out and then do command option shift one, it's also gonna run that script and then it's gonna append it over there. But that's basically how you do it. Uh, hopefully we, uh, we, we've we helped the um, poster over here, the, uh, the author, the requester, uh, figure out how to do this. You can do this for basically anything else. Um, that's kind of why I wanted to show, show it to everybody here. Uh, it's a very simple way to take, compare two different sheets and make sure that you're constantly adding, uh, values to whatever ma main master sheet that you're using. And you can have that run on a trigger, uh, basis. So like on edit or on open, you can also have it, um, run on a schedule using Google apps scripts. Uh, if you do have any issues, you know, following along, feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Always happy to answer any questions or talk more about triggered actions or scheduled actions or anything of that sort. Uh, of course, if you find this helpful, please make sure to hit the like button. That's the best way to support the channel. Uh, we're really trying to help everybody here. So by hitting that like button, you help uh, our videos show up in the YouTube search results much better for anybody looking for this type of stuff. So make sure to hit that like button and help us out. Uh, also, we are releasing other videos. We have a many different series on different tools and applications that help you as a subscriber, bootstrap or entrepreneur. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and also the bell so you get notified whenever we release the next video. Uh, Anyway, 
I'm a guy called Joe. This is Bootstrapping Tools Community Support. It's been a pleasure, and we're out.